Today I'm with Dr. Tom Deering, who's the incoming president of the Heart Rhythm Society. We're very fortunate to have him on the show. Welcome to Web's Edge TV, Heart Rhythm TV today. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. So as the incoming president, you have a lot of responsibilities, but what is your vision for the Heart Rhythm Society this coming year? The Heart Rhythm Society, as you know, is the leading organization for arrhythmic issues in the world. So what I think we want to do, Kevin, is we want to bring it to the next level. What do we do? What is fundamentally important for us, I think, are education, number one. You know, this is an incredible meeting. You know, the educational opportunities are broad-based uh, and they are multiple so that people can find that which they want. So I think what we want to do is, number one, is continue meetings like this, continue to engage our other societies who perform meetings and uh, you know continue those educational efforts. We do a lot of collaborative efforts, a lot of collaborative meetings with other societies. We want to grow that. We're initiating a digital platform so that our educational opportunities at this meeting don't just stay one week in May, but they will have the opportunity to be 24-7. We want to change those particular educational efforts that come out of meetings like this, and we want to uh, make it something that people can use to influence how they do practice. So taking education from how we are knowledge-based, how we learn at an institute, how we learn at a week, and making it an incredibly large operational effort. I think another important thing is, you know, we've got hundreds and thousands of people who practice electrophysiology around the country. We have to hold ourselves to high quality standards. That is extremely important. So we're forming a quality group within Heart Rhythm Society to advance those considerations. I think that is extremely important. We also want to engage members. You know, if we don't keep the younger generation involved, active, and contributing, our society and our specialty won't have the progress over the next four decades that it has had in the past four decades. So I think those are three very important things that we need to do. And if we can accomplish those, I'll be very, very happy. You know, I've been a member of the Heart Rhythm Society since I was a fellow at Duke back in the late 90s. <laughs> uh -huh. and You're timing yourself. <laughs> yes. And then one of the things I remember back then was the buzz surrounding the research at the meeting. I have not seen buzz at a meeting like this year since Made It 2 was released as we anticipated the release of Cabana. What is, you know, in your mind, the most exciting new developments in EP in the coming year? Well, I think you made a very important point. I remember back, you know, when Made It and Musk came about, and that led to a whole series of, you know, changes. At that time, you know, devices were predominantly for secondary prevention, right. uh, and we didn't do that many of them. Based on those landmark studies, primary prevention, as you know, became probably the main, you know, utilization of devices over the short period of a year or two, and certainly is now. I think Cabana was a very, very important late-breaking clinical trial. We certainly need to get the document, we need to have the uh, paper out so that we can review it in more detail, and we have to have those sub-study analyses that, you know, Doug is, you know, going to work on. But I think several key messages came from Cabana. Uh, number one, you know, we see that it is safe. You know, when done by the right people at the right time, atrial fibrillation ablation is safe. So I think that's an important message that we need to get to patients. Number two, it is the same, essentially, if you look at the intention to treat, as is, you know, medical therapy. So that leads to what is becoming, you know, the shared decision-making opportunity. So as a patient, I think if you're having atrial fibrillation, the conversation has to become is atrial fibrillation ablation right for you? Is are drugs right for you? You know, et cetera. That's a conversation based on that study that I think is important. And then we saw based on, you know, the actual on treatment, you know, considerations that patients seem to do better with ablation. We need more detail. I think it's too premature to say definitively what we need to do, but that data as it becomes available, as we see the paper and as we get more information, I think could be as significant and landmark uh, in terms of change as made it, uh, you know, was in those days and Musk was in the States. Yeah. You know, one final question. You mentioned the future of the society is the young people that are, that are coming through fellowship and are new members now. What advice do you have for young EPs uh, when it comes to engagement at HRS? I think that's a very, very important question. I think there's a number of ways in which young folks can and should get involved. We have a number of communities that we've set up. You can join, you can actually start a community based on a particular topic. Uh, if you're interested in topic X or topic Y, that gives you an opportunity to collaborate and network 
network with other individuals. You can bring in senior people to help be your mentors. That's what we've asked the communities to do. You can also have an opportunity to take on a project and develop that project and show leadership. So if you do those types of things, you have a great opportunity to demonstrate how you can do things and how you can advance your own career in that initiative. Another aspect is we have an emerging leaders group that is led by people who are roughly, you know, finishing their fellowship and working for the next four years or so. Many of the people who started that several years ago are reaching that point where they're no longer emerging leaders. So we want to get new emerging leaders in there. They put on a number of sessions here. Some of those sessions are educational. Some of those sessions are actually networking. They have their own lounge here. We want to have them get together, learn from each other, connect with those of us who are in the leadership role so we can see where they're going. Those are two things that I would strongly suggest that they do. Another third opportunity is continue to work doing science, continue to submit abstracts, continue to get the opportunity to present. If you don't do that early in your career, you're probably not going to pick it up later on, and that's a great opportunity. Well, I want to personally thank you for your service in advance to the society as president. I know it's going to be a busy year, and thanks so much for spending time with us on the show today. I'm very happy to do it. Thank you again for thank having you. me. Appreciate yes, it, Kevin. Yes, thanks. Sir.